And here is Clarence Smith. So Ford is in there, plays with three fouls. Bilski is playing Inglesby. Porter's being played by Jimmy Wolf and being played very well. Howard Porter making it 41 to 34, equaling the longest lead of seven points. Bobby Morse in a hurry. And the rebound to Clarence Smith, knocked out of bounds by Clarence Smith. Or was it? Not? Now it's Chris Ford with the ball. They called it one way and then changed it. All right, Smith played by Morse. Wall is playing Ford as they run that high post with the guard at the top of the key, and they screen for Porter, who is going to go on Jimmy Wolf. The follow shot is no by something. Smith, he gets it back. He gives it to Porter. Inglesby picked up by Bilski, so they'll have to set the offense up. Excellent defense by the Quakers in tight. Yes, it was, and good control by Villanova. They didn't rattle. They came out and reset. We got a whistle and a Steve Bilski foul as Tom Inglesby comes to the line. Bilski two, first foul of the half. And there we have Tom Inglesby out of Cardinal O'Hara. As a free throw shooter, 72%. As a team, they shoot 68%. The Quakers were number one in the nation in free throw as a team prior to the uh, last game with Temple. They shoot 77%. They were up at the 80% mark. As a team, phenomenal. It's uh, 42 to 34. And it appears right now that they've gone back to the ball zone. Bobby Morris, 42 to 36. Penn with some all-court man-to-man pressure. Penn will zone press, but will not play a zone defense. They get it to Ford. He goes over the top. Short of the mark, and Jimmy Wolf comes up with the basketball. Lead pass to Bilski. He's got a man open in Morse, but he couldn't see him. Bilski tries to force feed the middle, and Smith picks it up. Here's the break. Three on two. To Howard Porter, to Tom Inglesby, and it's a 44-36 ball game. With 18 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Already today, the number one team in the nation has been knocked off. UCLA by Notre Dame, 89-82. Calhoun off the fake, left hands it up and home, 44-38. to Just a beautiful move by Corky Calhoun, cutting right, left across the key, changing hands on the dribble and putting that soft left-handed hook up there. His coach said when the time comes for him to take the shots, don't worry about it, he'll take them. That's Ford. Short of the mark, and Jimmy Wolf with another rebound. Jimmy's got six boards. Bobby Morse comes down, goes up, scores! It's 44 to 40, and Bobby Morse has got eight points on four buckets. Every time the Wildcats look like they just might spread it open by double figures, the Quakers come back as Smith, short of the mark, and Morse grabs the rebound. And the junior from Kennett Square. The most valuable player in the Quaker City Tournament having his finest game in a couple now. He gets an offensive board. He's in the lane. He shoots. It's no good. A follow is no good. And a rebound by Smith. Here's a three-on-three. Three. Inglesby the middleman. Bilski. He gets it over Bilski. Short of the mark. And Jimmy Wolf gets rebound number seven. Here's Dave Wall. 44 to 42. And six straight points now. Well, the Quakers have drawn them to within two. Semitowski gets inside. Calhoun on him. Jimmy Wolf takes the miss. The outlet pass to Bilski. They can run if you let him. He could tie it with a bucket here. He's going to go for it. No good. Rebound, Sementowski. <laughs> 15 minutes, 59 seconds. Timeout's been called. The score, Villanova 44, Pennsylvania 42.
Well, you hear it before a jam-packed palestra, and I'm sure a tremendous television audience. Pennsylvania and Villanova in the game people have waited to see ever since the palestra schedule was published this year. And right now, very little to choose. Villanova by two at 44-42. A lot of time left, 16 minutes. As you looked at the pluses and the minuses of this game, it came up even. And that's pretty much the way the game is coming up. Tematowski tries to get it to Porter, but Pilski makes the play. He did. He made a diving interception of that ball and knocked it loose. Here's Morse. It spills out on him, and Porter grabs the loose ball. Rebound number nine. Ooh, that's close. Sementowski with a very fine first half. Shooting percentages were just great, considering the, the shots were being taken from. That's Inglesby deep into the corner. And a whistle on the play and a foul on Bilski. He'll get one or two. We'll wait for the call. That's three on Bilski now. It's Jack Kraft's contention that despite the depth that everybody talks about, the Quaker having... There are no capable replacements for Bilski and or Wall. He does not believe that Penn has anybody on the bench. It'll be one shot. Who can come in and do the same job that Bilski and Wall can do for you. So, the point being, he would love to see either one of those two guys get into foul trouble. 45 to 42. And, of course, you get the guard, Inglesby, who is still forward-oriented and can't shoot from the corners. Calhoun is open, and Calhoun can hit 44-45. The Wildcats by one. They break the press. It's Smith being ridden by Dave Wall, who knocks it out of bounds. 15-01 showing on the clock and one point separating these two fine clubs. You're watching two of the best clubs in the country. Make no mistake about it. Smith, 47-44. And the senior out of Harrisburg. Gives the Cats three-point breather, and it's nine points for Clarence tonight. There are a couple of people who could break loose at any moment. You just saw one of them, Clarence Smith. That's Bobby Morse. Boom! 47-46, and Bobby Morse has five buckets. Now they're trying to work to Porter but Sementowski misses the shot and we got a foul here who's it going to be on it's going to be on one of the Quakers Jimmy Wolf for pushing off and Porter's going to be at the line so in an attempt to get position for the rebound he fouled him immediately following tonight's doubleheader join Dr. Shock for his screaming feature the werewolf as you look at the brain trust at Villanova University Jack Kraft Dan Doggerty. Howard Porter connects it's now 48 to 46 Porter has 10 points. 14-19 on the clock and running. What a magnificent basketball game in all respects. There's Dave Wolf feeding Jimmy Wolf, blocked by Howard Porter, but a whistle. Going to be a foul on Porter. That is on Howard. Personal foul number two, and only the first team foul against the Wildcats as Jimmy Wolf comes to the line. He has scored four points. 0 for 1 at the line thus far. We've talked about Dave Wolf's shooting, Al, but I think we also ought to mention the fact that right to here, he has done an excellent job on Chris Ford. Really holding him in check. We have a tie ball game. A tie game. The Quakers down by eight at the top of this half have made it up. And it's now 48 apiece. And Dave Wall has caught hacking Tom Inglesby. So that is number one on Wall and number four on the University of Pennsylvania. Much to the chagrin of the gentleman down there that you're looking at. Inglesby gets one. Time 13 minutes and 58 seconds. Villanova by one, 49 to 48. Inglesby with 13. The Quakers have not had a lead. I'm just thinking, I don't think they've had a lead any time in the ball game here as I check my stats. Maybe once early. The 
They get it to Morse. And the Quakers lead 50 to 49 with 13 minutes and 28 seconds to go. And Bobby Morse picks up a dozen. Morse had to sit out a great deal of the first half when he picked up three fouls. And they missed him. He's proven it. Inglesby, new, and a rebound. Morse. The Quakers lead by one with the ball. Wall goes through and no one follows him, so it's the ball defense. Now Wall breaks the seams of the zone and connects 52 to 49. Wall has 16. And there's the longest lead for Pennsylvania. Three points. Porter having very, very difficult time shedding number 40, Jimmy Wolf. They pick and roll to Chris Ford. He misses it, but Porter stuffs it back in a hole. One it's of the few times tonight that Ford has managed to lose Dave Wool. 52 to 51. Winkers by one with the ball. 12 minutes, 24 seconds left. Bilski drops it off to Calhoun. Steve had a shot. Bilski off the fake. And Dave Wall is fouled by Chris Ford, number four. Now that could be big trouble. That's four on Ford. We have 12 minutes and two seconds left in the ball game. And we're going to have Joe McDowell back in very shortly. So this opens up all kinds of possibilities, Al, as they remove one of their better ball handers. Will Penn go to a press? and try and take advantage of it. 53-51, Penn by two, and Dave Wool with 17 points as McDowell is in and Ford is out. 12-02 remaining in the ballgame. And for most of this contest, it was Villanova on top. By as many as eight at one point. It is now Penn by two, by three, 54-51. Just token pressure at the moment as Inglesby brings it up. McDowell plays high post. Porter. Porter trying to get rid of Jimmy Wolf and can't do it. Inglesby rubs Pilsky off and Wolf picks him up on a switch. That's Smith outside. He takes Bobby Morse inside, tries to, but loses the handle. Well, you just saw as good an example of man-to-man -man defense as uh, you're ever going to see. Bobby Morris. A little strong this time, and a rebound comes to McDowell. Penn has not had to go to its bench yet here in the second half. Smith and Morse. Wolf on Porter. Calhoun on Simontowski. Bilski on Inglesby. That's what you're watching right there. Porter over Jimmy Wolf. No. Follow shot is not there as Bobby Morse cleans the board. Timeouts being called by Penn before the shot. Timeout with 10.56 showing on the clock. Penn 54, Villanova 51. We're going to be back in a minute. Charlie significantly 
Before Chris Ford sat down with his fourth foul, he was 0 for 5 in this half, and Hank Semitoski, who had scored 13 points in the first 20 minutes, has yet to get a point, and we've got 10.56 remaining in the second half. So there's the answer right there. Defense. Exactly right. Those man-to-man -man matchups have been outstanding for Pennsylvania. Dave Wold. Bobby Morse guarded by Semitoski. It's man-to-man. -man. Yes, it is. Calhoun gets position on Smith, and Smith makes the play. Calhoun gets it back, fires over his head. An amazing shot, an amazing shot by Calhoun. Well, I think, he's a, I think he's an amazing basketball player. I don't really believe the people in Philadelphia know yet what Corky Calhoun can do. 56 to 51 on that one. Inglesby answers, it's 56 to 53. That's got to go down as the shot of the season, doesn't it? It was something to see. Dave Wall and Inglesby fouled him as he got a step on him. WPHL TV Channel 17, your station for sports. We're very pleased to be able to bring you this contest tonight. This is Al Meltzer along with Charlie Swift as we have presented a couple of games of import. One that went to Niagara 77-76, and you couldn't get much tighter than that. And here's one. At the moment, it's 57-53 pen, but there's still 10.03 left on that clock and a long way to go. As you look at the two benches, Harder on your left, Kraft on your right. So the Cats have gone to a man-to-man. -man. They set a screen for Porter, but he can't do it. And thus far, they have not been able to take advantage of any mismatches. Well, they thought this would be one, maybe. Inglesby with Bilski. There's Porter trying to find some room. Does. Misfires. It's Inglesby. 18-footer. No. And Calhoun with a rebound. Bobby Morse. 59-53. And there is the biggest lead of the night for the Quaker. Six points. Morse with 14. And as you look at the clock, you start to think what I'm sure everyone else is thinking, Charlie. If Penn has any kind of a lead, they can freeze that ball as well as anybody. A great follow shot by Clarence Smith makes it 59 to 55 with 8.59 left in the game. Bilski in a foot race with McDowell. He might have been fouled up somewhere at the top of the key, and that's what the call's going to be. Yeah, then there's an interesting uh, uh, mismatch, and uh, it is that at both ends of the floor because McDowell is playing Bilski. That's 6'4 to 5'11. Bilski's playing McDowell at the other end. Bilski gives up size but gains it in speed, as you saw there. Steve Bilski, an 80% free throw shooter throughout his collegiate career. Makes it 60 to 55. Steve has scored but one point this half. He's got nine for the game. That, by the way, is the fourth team foul against the Wildcats. Both teams now have four. And it's now that we're going to find out what Villanova's made out of Al because Penn behind by eight did not lose its poise or its confidence. Kept playing its game. They screen for this one by Porter. He can't get it through. So Smith lets ride. It doesn't go in. And Bobby Morse comes away with the ball. Here's Dave Wall. Bobby Morse is tripped and it's going to be a foul call on Clarence Smith. That's an unfortunate uh, situation for... Smith. He was not trying to trip Bob Morse. They were both running down the court looking at the basketball and it just so happened that their bodies came together and Morse tripped over him. Smith has three. The team has five. New stadium, new station, new stars. The Phillies on TV 17. 826 remaining is Bobby Morse. Now Bobby caught a virus during the Quaker City where he was the most valuable player and this has certainly got a, this is his best game since that tournament. No two ways about it. I would think so. 61 to 56. The Quakers on top. Now they're going to put a little pressure in the backboard here. As Inglesby comes over the line guarded by Dave Wall. It's a man-to-man -man defense. It's McDowell who's in there for Ford. McDowell takes Bilski in the hole. He's short of the mark. The rebound by Calhoun. And now the Quakers own the backboard in this half. Checking out beautifully. Eight minutes coming up, 61 to 55.
They've isolated Morse on Semitoski. What a move! 63 to 55. Bobby Morse with 17. And Chris Ford's going to report in at the next opportunity. Offensive foul on Clarence Smith. That is the sixth Villanova foul. Timeout has been called by Villanova with 7.37 remaining, and that's the story right there. LaSalle defeated uh, Lafayette 92 to 83, and Kenny Durrett had 40 points tonight. That score just handed to us. Yeah, he just can't hardly play at all, Kenny. Now, that, by the way, is a wildcat with some arrows through it. Yeah, there it is. And it may well happen. There's 737 remaining, and the cat is down 63 to 55, and the Quakers have the ball and the lead. And you know what they can do with that basketball when they've got a lead? They can sit on it just as well as anybody I've ever seen. Ah, they can be deliberate, do whatever they want. Bilski almost penetrating, changes his mind. Wall, and here's the man-to-man -man defense. He's got Inglesby on him. And he may have lost it. No, it's off Inglesby. He was screened away. Well, if you look for turning points in a basketball game that is not over yet, just check as Bilski makes his way in, and he's fouled by McDowell. That's going to cost him two shots. I can't make this point strongly enough, Al. Uh, when you have a 5'11 guy playing a 6'4, you expect that they're going to take advantage of it. It has worked just the reverse. Penn has taken advantage of the fact that McDowell is playing Bilski. Bilski and, much faster, of course, than McDowell. Yes, and much yet quicker. Villanova has not been able to come down the other end and work to McDowell over Bilski. I was going to say, at the top of this half, Villanova opened up a fast eight point lead. The Quakers never lost their poise, eventually gained the lead. Here sitting on a 64-55 lead, and now it's up to the Wildcats to see if they can't come back. 65-55, your longest lead of the night by either team, 10 points. And the Quakers have it with 7 minutes, 7 minutes to go. So if Villanova is to make a move, it must happen now. And that's Porter at 15 feet. It doesn't go in. Ford's back in the ball game. Smith gets one. It comes out on him. A rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Calhoun. Refs are conversing. We saw it, Calhoun, but I guess that's the way it's going to be. Al Grossman and Steve Hanzo doing another beautiful job of officiating a big game in the Big Five. Yeah, you, they're two of the best. You just saw a reason why. They're, they're a good team. Porter, who has problems going to the hoop with that ball in his hand. And Inglesby goes and is fouled by Wald. He'll get two shots. Uh, we, if we may, just for the moment, as Howard comes to the line. Howard has uh, got all the tools, but there's only one weapon in the arsenal he has not developed since he came to Villanova, and that's his ability to make that move toward the basket, Charlie. Yes, and his defenders will sometimes take advantage of that, as Jim Wolf is tonight, crowding him a great deal, inviting him to make the move to the basket rather than to pull up and take the jumper. Well, they've changed the decision here. It's going to be Inglesby that was fouled on the shot after the conversation. And while we're talking about the man-to-man -man by Pennsylvania, the individual matchups and the jobs being done, do not forget that Jim Wolf has played Howard Porter and played him very tough. Inglesby gets one more. 
Oh yes, Howard has taken a dozen shots tonight. He scored five field goals. 65 to 56. Six and a half minutes left. Man to man defense. Ten can't give to Bilski be, uh, too much room. He can shoot from outside as well. They appear to be almost ready to start spreading it out a bit, Al, yep. even though there's a lot of time left. Of course, it's a bonus situation any time a foul is committed now. Wall and Bilski doing the job at the moment. Sitting on the basketball. He might put it in a deep freeze with 5.58 on the clock. And there's a foul. McDowell is going to be one and one for Steve Bilski. Semitowski is in the game here, replacing Clarence Smith. You just saw what Steve Bilski can do to you. He straddled that hash mark, the one that uh, determines whether you are trying to penetrate or not, that black hash mark at the side of the floor. And he just dribbled to one side of it and then the other, in and out. And finally, McDowell, in frustration, leaned over his back and fouled him. And now you're starting to see the replay of an old familiar tune here at the University of Pennsylvania Palestra. And that's the Quakers Bilski or Wall on the line late in the game trying to fatten the lead at 66 to 56 with less than six minutes to go. Porter wants the ball and Wolf came over the top and fouled him. That is three on Jimmy Wolf, six on the club. Porter gets a single free throw. That's Dick Harder checking on. Um, looks like Craig Littlepage. So uh, Craig undoubtedly will be assigned the job on Howard Porter. Craig, an excellent defensive player, replacing Jimmy Wolf, who gets a standing ovation from the Quaker Rooters down below us. He played an excellent defensive game again tonight. And picked up eight boards in the process. Porter connects to make it 66 to 57 with 540 showing. They sneak Calhoun inside. Corky with a blind shot this time, no, and Porter grabs the rebound. The last time Corky tried something like that, it went in the hole. That's Inglesby off of his move, short of the mark. Zemantowski stuffs it back in. It's 66 to 59. That is the first two points of the half by Zemantowski, who had 13 in the first 20 minutes. At that time, Hank was a five for nine ball player. Bilski making it on McDowell, but doesn't take it in. Calhoun has pretty much put the clamps on him in this second half. All right, this is Wall, and it's up to Inglesby now, as he's just going to sit on that basketball, and they're going to lull him into a little bit of a false sense of security and try to get the easy shot. Now Porter comes out to help. Almost on the line. That's Little Page in there. And that's what they are definitely doing now. They're letting the air out of the basketball. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons you saw the substitution made. A little Page for Wolf. Craig is a better ball handler. They double up on Bilski. Bilski gets through the whole game. And now there's 426 left in the game. Well, Al Williams in game one, Steve Bilski in game two. That's Dave Wolf sandwiched in, and Calhoun has it. They're going to put it away if they can with the stall. McDowell got a hand on it and knocked it out of bounds. So with something less than six minutes to go, Penn decided to sit on it a little bit. Go for nothing but the good shot. There's a foul here on Tom Inglesby. And Wool gets one and one. Inglesby with three, and there's Dave Wool. Tonight, the 6 2 senior from East Brunswick, New Jersey. has done it as he has done it so often in his three years and this kid just got to play professional basketball for somebody that's all 67 to 59 
Timeout being called by Villanova. Charlie, there's 3.55 remaining, and uh, there's no secret to what's going to happen now. Penn, every time it gets its hands on the basketball, is going to just sit on it and try to draw the foul. And I think it's significant, uh, too, Al, uh, in as much as we've talked so much about Villanova's lack of depth and the problems they could very well get into should any one of the five starters get into trouble. It has happened here tonight because Penn made its big run with Chris Ford on the bench. And as soon as he picked up that third personal, he was not the same basketball player. When he came back, he was not nearly so aggressive. And uh, it's more than just the individual thing, if, uh, if you can extend the point for a minute. Ford is an integral part of that zone defense. When he plays the wing, they try and overplay their men over to him so he can operate on them. So if you get him out of there, you change everything. You take away uh, one of the finest passers they have, a 16-point-a-game scorer, and one of the keys to their defensive zone. Because regardless of who is substituted for Ford, he cannot take up the slack. But when Chris got that third personal, it took a lot of uh, his enthusiasm away. Necessarily, he could not play that same uh, gung-ho brand of basketball that he likes to play. The Wildcats have the ball, but they trail. 67 to 59. Pennsylvania, on the other hand, survived, even though Bob Moore said to sit down for a while. That is a rebound by Craig Littlepage off a couple of misses in tight, and Steve Bilski has the basketball. Quakers trying for 15-0 on the year. The Cats came in 14-3. Bilski earned it. 69-59, and with 327 remaining, it's going to be an uphill fight for the Wildcats. That's Ford to the basket. Follow, no. Rebound, Bobby Morse. Whistle, foul, Semantowski. It'll be one and one. Well, everything going Pennsylvania's way right now. They have the lead. It's ten points. They have the clock working for them. They have two of the best guards you'll ever find at letting the air out of the ball. But I think what has impressed me most of all about Penn tonight, Al, is the fact that they have demonstrated once again that regardless of who they're playing or what the situation, they get behind or what have you, they keep their poise. This is about as poised, as calm and collected a basketball team as you're ever going to see. A 70-59 game and the Quakers with 3.16 to go. Looking good. It's 18 points for Bobby Morse. Remember now, Bobby set out a lot of that first half with three personal fouls. 71-59. He's got 15 of his points in the second half. They get Smith in tight. He feeds Semitowski. 71 to 61 with 303. Of course, the Quakers will sit on that basketball, but make no mistake about it. As Bilski indicated last time, if you want to hang around, they'll just drive right up the middle. Steve Bilski out of Roslyn, New York. And you're getting an idea now why Jack McKinney is going to be so glad to see those two guys graduate. Boy, they're murder. Yeah, he can't say enough about them. That's broken loose by Inglesby. And Smith did not know Inglesby was there for the pass. Semantowski, no. Followed by Porter is good. And it's 71 to 63 with two minutes and 14 seconds remaining. Now the turnovers in the game, each team has been guilty of only two in this half and eight for the entire game. That gives you an indication how well it's been played. Yeah, that's tremendous. It's going to be a foul on Semitowski, and Wall gets one and one. There's the calmest guy on the floor right there, and if it's not him, it's Bilski. Dave Wall. Everybody was after this guy to play football. Yeah, he's a heck of a quarterback. 72 to 63, and... Wall has hit 21 points in the game of the year. And 22, and it's back to 10 points, and there's two minutes and one second showing.
Inglesby misses. So does Porter. It is Quaker ball. Some of the fans are starting to leave now, figuring the Quakers, with a minute 51 remaining, sitting at a 10-point lead, aren't about to blow it here. And the Cats can do nothing but gamble. Leading 42 to 34 at the opening of the second half. Villanova could not take advantage and sustain. Full court to Bilski. Good. And a foul. And Smith is hurt. I sincerely hope not badly. Uh, he made just a super effort to head Bilski off at the pass. He is out of the game with his fifth foul, but the important thing is, is he okay? He hit the support of the basket after he clipped Bilski on the way in. That's Jake Nevin down there, the trainer looking at him. And even though it's padded, you get a pretty good jolt if you run into that thing full tilt. I think uh, padded is uh, a misnomer, Charlie. You ever get next to it and give it a good slap, it doesn't <laughs> feel any different than a lead pipe. Well, he hit it pretty hard, so we hope Clarence Smith is all right. I guess he's okay. It appears here. Good tight shot. Ron Bird, camera number three downstairs. I'm sure he's very disappointed, of course. Uh, his team is trailing, but he's okay. He's also out of the game with five fouls, and Bobby Gold will come in to replace him. Gold from Upper Derby. Well, you can appreciate the frustration. Clarence Smith, a senior on this club, one of the two, had not beaten Pennsylvania before this game, wanted very badly to do it, and it's not going to be. Two years ago, this guy at the line threw in a buzzer beater in a stall game in which Penn upset highly favored Villanova 32 to 30. Last year, the Quakers convincingly knocked off Penn 59 to 55 in somewhat similar a ball game in which they sat on it, had it pretty much a control in the late going. It's 76 63. Quakers have the basketball with a minute 39. And I think the drama has pretty much ended here at the Palestra. The Quakers, number four in the country, coming into tonight, just might move up a notch or two after this one. Taken away by Semantowski to goal. To Inglesby. Open is four. Challenges Morse. And Morse beats him. And that's kind of been the story of the game tonight. Not only that, Morse takes the rebound. It's been Bobby Morse in the second half with 15 points, a mess of rebounds, and a great defensive job. We're going to have a jump ball as they peel the bodies off the floor. Yeah, a big study in contrast to a continual point made earlier huh, is that Morse with a foul I see just been called. When Chris Ford re rejoined the game after sitting out with his three fouls, he was not able to find his game again. Bob Morse was, and that's been one of the big differences. Well, you mentioned the turning point. Ford collecting uh, three fouls in the first half, did not play his game in the second half when he picked up his fourth and had to sit down for a while. Uh, there isn't much left on that nine mad squad for Jack Kraft to go to. Conversely, during the entire first half, Dick Harder just kept rotating four or five ball players in there to get himself some kind of a combination. Semantowski. And that's the story. They play volleyball, and I think it's Semantowski's basket. It's Howard Porter's basket. But it's academic. It's 76 66 with less than a minute to go. Morse is open. Follow shot. He's short of the mark. This is Porter. He connects, but it may be a little bit too late for the middle of the Wildcats because there's only 33 seconds left, and it's 76 to 68. And a foul on goal, and Bilski will come to the line. Jimmy Wolf comes in, and they're going to take Bobby Morse out to a standing ovation. Bobby Morse, who tonight scored 19 points with seven rebounds. And don't forget, he sat out a good 10 minutes of this game. Howard Porter tonight becomes the third leading Villanova scorer, all-time scorer, with 1,649 points, surpassing the great Paul Arizon with that basket right there. Porter has 20 on the night, by the way. And Jim Haney is up off the pen bench. He's going to come in for one of these two guards, and whichever one it is, you're going to hear some kind of a roar 
It'll be Wolf probably because Bilski's at the line. That's going to be the call. Here goes Dave Wolf. Boy, what a ball game he played. So for Dave Wolf, tonight he scored 22 points. It's 77-68 with 30 seconds remaining. 78-68. Little Steve Bilski's put on an exhibition. He's got 19 points. And he'll be out in a minute because uh, Walters is about to come in. Sementowski. Rebound to Calhoun. Whistle foul. Little Page. Uh, here come Billy Walters. Or Bilski. And there goes Steve. Calhoun and Keith Hansen is in for him. So the starting unit has left the floor except for Jimmy Wolf. He just came back into the ball game. And for the 42nd time, that starting unit went to the well and came up with 40 wins. They have lost but two thus far. Ford makes it. It's one and one. He gets another. It's 78 to 69 with 21 seconds remaining. And the word defense will become very big after the game tonight in conversations about the game. Well, you certainly can't talk about this ball game without talking about defense. It's a great key to Pennsylvania's success. Billy Walters under pressure. Porter knocks it out of bounds. There's 19 seconds remaining and a 78 to 70 win for the Quakers in the game. Still retained by the Quakers as Porter got a hand on it. There's a little page. Walters, nine seconds. Jimmy Wolf. Five, four. Little Page fires it up. And there it is. The end of the game. That's Sylvania 78. Villanova 70. And let's catch a little bit of this action before we break away from the commercial message. They're going to take the net down, maybe. Yep, yep. They've decided uh, this is the Big Five championship that was won tonight. So they can take the nets down as across the way a dejected band of Wildcats slowly files out toward the dressing room. You're looking at a very happy young guy up there cutting that net down. That is Jim Haney, who, but for an injury to his knee prior to his first ever freshman game, might have been out there starring for Pennsylvania tonight. He was that good a prospect as he came to Penn. So a very frustrated guy on many occasions for not playing. There's Haney up there cutting down the net as Pennsylvania tonight has successfully defended the Big Five championship. They do it clean, as they say in the game, by winning 4-0, beating everybody that came at them. What you probably missed there uh, on the screen was Howard Porter going over to congratulate the University of Pennsylvania on their big win tonight. It's 78-70, to the final score. After this message, we'll be back with our statistical wrap-up.